Goodbye, Oakland, California. Can't say I'm gonna miss you. Hello, Petaluma, California. It's time to get a get a Z. Well, we just got started and my plan is already foiled. <laughs> So we're out here in Petaluma, California. Uh, we stopped at a U-Haul place, and the plan was I was gonna get a U-Haul truck with a like a you know like a pickup truck style thing with a trailer, and then we were gonna uh, put the Z on that, and we we're gonna drive it home. Turns out that the trucks are only for local use, so they're not allowed to go out of state. Uh, so then we'd have to use a box truck, and there's a shortage of box trucks in California right now. So if you want to drive one back home to Oregon, it's fifteen hundred dollars before gas, so seventeen hundred dollars which is more expensive than it costs to ship a vehicle across the entire country. So we're obviously not doing that. So where does that land us today? I, I have no idea. We can go look at the car. All right, I've contacted the owner of the Z. He's at home, so we're gonna go out there and check it out and talk to him and explain the issue and hopefully it's not too big of a deal. I don't know. We'll take a look at the car, give him some money, buy the car, and then we'll figure out a way to ship it home. Sounds like a plan, right? We're back on the rails. We are slowly cruising through the country. We're on our way to go see the car. Uh, before we do check out the car, let's take a quick break for a pre-recorded word from our sponsor. What's up guys, it's Chris from the future. This episode is proudly sponsored by Autotempest.com. So Autotempest was the first place that I went to to find the first 240Z. So obviously once that got crashed and I needed to find another one, it was the place that I went right back to to find this 240Z that you're about to see in a second from now. If you don't already know about Autotempest, it is like the it's like a, a, a search engine for cars. It is like the number one spot to go and you can type in the type of car that you want. So for us, we're looking for a certain year range of a 240Z with a couple different trims and you can select distances and all these other good things. And you can even jump into the advanced section and, and select a lot more criteria if you're looking for something very particular. Go ahead and submit your search and Auto Tempest searches through sites like eBay, cars.com, Cars Direct, Auto Trader, and Car Gurus. It also lets you compare results from all of Craigslist. It's really great having them all in a list like this, including pictures right in front of your faces because then you can quickly compare the prices versus kind of the quality that the car is in, the shape versus the price, get a really good uh, feel for the market and how much these cars are going for and what is a good deal and what might not be a good deal. Also, I just highly recommend it if you're searching for a very specific car like I am with this 240Z, there's no better way to search the entire country very, very quickly. So you guys check it out. There's a link in the description. It's autotempest.com. Thanks so much for sponsoring this episode. Now let's head you back into the past. Take a look at our new 240. All right, so here she is. This is the uh, this is the D, the Z that I've been looking at. It's a uh, 71, and it's it's exactly what we need. It's just a shell. It has some it has some rust spots. Um, nothing too major. This is what's really been stopping it from you know probably going back on the road as another running and driving one. But it's a clean title Z shell. Um, the previous, one of the previous owners had painted it this kind of aftermarket blue color. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's actually the same color of a body as the one that we had before. Floor pans are in really good condition compared to the, especially compared to the last one that we had. Transmission tunnel, if we wanted to try and reuse this in any way, is in like, is in really, really good shape. Um, it doesn't have a windshield, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, for me, especially when we're cutting it, that would have added a lot of rigidity, but, um, it might not be a bad thing because you know it's better to work on these things without a windshield in them. So the the rust spots that I'm finding are like this right here is a little little bit of surface. I don't know if that surface rust are going all the way through. A little bit of stuff kind of back here. It looks like we may need to build some some patches um, back here. But it's really it's not too. It's nothing that I'm finding is too bad um, at all. There's a little bit of waviness right here. It looks like there's a little bit of body work done or something like that. It's hard to tell what's going on though. Um, doesn't really sound much different. As far as in the wheel wells and everything else like that, it's it's really it's really clean. We definitely have our options when it comes to the floor pan of how much we want to cut out the second go around. If we want to change our strategy at all, if we want to leave more uh, behind, we can do that this time. All this looks looks good. Looks good. That's just surface stuff. 
So overall, I mean, I would say this is in really similar condition to the last one we had as far as the amount of repairs that are gonna be needed. Um, not too much, just a lot of like, you know, sanding off of the old paint, um, taking care of any rusty spots, make sure they're all nice and primered up and cleaned up. And then, uh, I think, you know, obviously any patchwork that needs to be done. I love these uh, Z emblems, these are nice in black. Um, we yeah, all this paint needed to be sanded off either way in both of them. The gas cap was red. We're learning new things. It's got red and yellow on it. And the outside of it's black. We'll probably use the gas cap. Oh, this one's a little, yeah, seen better days. We'll probably use the other gas cap. Oh, this is one spot right here that's uh, got a little bit of, little bit of denting. But other than that, um, this back panel looks like it may have taken something. So it's not exactly 100% perfectly straight, but it's it's pretty good. It's in pretty good shape, especially for what I've been shopping around, the ones I've been seeing and stuff like that. It's really, really hard to find these things, especially at a decent price with ones with engines going for ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 nowadays. Um, you know, and then in the front, just kind of same old, same old that we saw before. No engine, front subframe, not quite a roller. So I'm buying it. This thing's coming home with me, but it's not coming home with me. Because we got to figure out how in the world to get this thing back to Portland so we can get started on it. Ooh, that, that guy right there is going to need a little bit of work. We're going to have an interesting time figuring out how to build some of these patch panels. Well, we bought the car. I'm super excited. We got our replacement Z. That car is in great condition. It's going to be a great candidate for what we need to do. I figure any of the pieces that are rusting out, we will just go ahead and cut those squares out and then cut a piece off of my old the old shell that we had, weld them back in place and we'll be we'll be ready to go. So, it's a great candidate exactly for what we need to do. Clean title, all that good stuff. The guy that's old to me is the nicest guy ever. So, um, he's hanging on to it since we obviously are not towing it with this thing. He's hanging on to it and uh, I've been thinking over some uh, some different shipping options. I'm not really sure what to do yet. Worst case scenario is we'll uh, pick it up with the we'll pick it up with the FJ Cruiser. Come on back down although I don't really want to do that. So I'm trying to figure out some shipping options, which I'll maybe talk about later. So for right now, Chelsea and I need to head back to the hotel. We got a meet tonight. I told everybody they could see the new Z, so I'm, I feel bad I feel bad about that, but uh, they could see the Aston Martin. Never been to San Francisco before. So let's head back to the hotel. We're getting ready for the meet tonight, so I just kind of put out an all call on Instagram since we are going to be in town. We had a little bit of extra time. We're in a pretty cool location. I really wish we had more time to like check it all out. It's called Alameda, and it's next to Oakland. And it looks like it's a little island, but I'm not really sure. Um, there's a lot of water, different water things around, which are really cool to see. So we picked a, a brewery that's like kind of on the waterfront, and uh, it looks really cool. Hopefully, it'll be fun for people to head out there, and we're all just going to meet up and, and have dinner and stuff like that. So that should be fun. Um, with the car, I've been thinking about how we're gonna get that car back home. So the guy that I bought it from, he has a forklift on his property. So forklifting it onto like a flatbed or something is a possibility. So that's kind of the number one thing that I'm gonna try and start doing, but that could be that could be a little bit tricky. We need almost like more of a private party shipping company. Um, and then if we need to, we can also add some, some wheels to it, potentially add a rear subframe and a front subframe and get that thing rolling. And then we'd have a roller and we could just ship it like a non-operable vehicle, which is, you know, a little bit more expensive, but it's not too bad. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. But worst case scenario, like I said, after the gambler and stuff like that, I will somehow get a trailer or maybe it's time for me to buy a trailer. I think it's definitely time. I'm a little worried about where to store it. But anyways, buy a trailer, attach it to the FJ, um, drive back down. We're about 10 hours away from home. I believe 10 to 12 hours away from home. Uh, drive down and trailer it back. That's also an option. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. But we're gonna finish getting ready and then we're gonna head out and meet some people. We made it, we're here. Other people are here too, no hooning. Oh yeah, I guess I realized I haven't filmed any of the Aston Martin since we were on this trip. We took the Aston Martin for this whole trip, VidCon, all that other stuff. Um, we got some bugs on the front, a little bit of leftover dirt, but other than that, the car's fantastic. So for the record, before anybody goes there, Chelsea and I are gonna be taking an Uber home. Our hotel's only like three miles down the road, so we got that figured out. Now, let's get a beer and meet some people. That 
was a lot of fun getting to meet all you guys. That was a really good way to do a meet, and uh, that was just so enjoyable getting to hang out with everybody. So a huge thanks to everybody that came out. Um, Joseph's getting the bed ready, so I guess it's time for bed. Huge thanks to everybody that came out. Uh, I loved seeing your guys' like, cars and meeting all you guys, seeing a lot of you guys for the second time as well. That was just really, really cool. So that was awesome. Uh, I don't feel like this episode is quite, quite ready to be over. I really expected to be like lugging a 240Z uh, back, back home today, but uh, no dice on that one. But I did get some connections from the people that we met tonight, um, so I think I got a line on a guy that will be able to ship it back to my place. So that's really cool. Anyways, let's wrap it up for tonight, and then we'll wake up tomorrow, and we'll road trip that Aston Martin home. Back on the road again. Feels like we spent a lot of time on the road this trip. Quick lunch break update. Car's doing great. It's very, very hot out, but uh, the car's doing good. We need to get air conditioning in there for sure. We're gonna get some in and out for lunch, and then we'll get back on the road. Thinking next time we take some time to work on this car, we gotta build our custom grill, need our like rear diffuser stuff in the back to kind of even out all the back stuff, and then definitely need air conditioning. That's like the first thing that we'll do. That actually be really easy. We just have to bolt up the condenser. And then the next thing I want to do, I think I think we should repaint it. I think we should paint it some crazy color. Let me know in the comments what color you'd like to see this car. I think it would look really cool, just something, something out there, something a little bit wacky. There's a red, like a, a, a bright red color that could be cool. I don't know. We should play with it though. Back on the road about 400 miles from home. All right, it's the next day. We made it home late, very late last night. I just was, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I didn't want to film anything, but uh, we, we, it took us so long because we got stuck in this crazy traffic jam uh, because of a construction zone. Five miles of uphill stop and go traffic, which was brutal, brutal. My clutch did not like that. But I felt a lot worse for all the semi-truck drivers because they're, all their loads were like trying to pull them back downhill. It's brutal. Uh, but we, we got in about midnight last night. The Aston Martin did perfectly and uh, still one of my favorite cars to drive on long distance trips like that. But we got to get air conditioning in that. So let me know in the comments below what you guys would like to see me do outside of just adding air conditioning and a front grill and some of the other stuff. Uh, and I'm really thinking about just going for like a crazy color on that one. Um, and I'd like to I'd like to jump into that this summer sometime, maybe like right after the Dotson build or something. I don't know. Maybe we could do it as a side project. Not really sure. Should not take that long, really painting just a couple days, you know. So um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, huge thanks to our sponsor, Auto Tempest. Guys, there's a link in the description. Go check that out. Find your next car, autotempest.com. All right, guys, I will see you soon. We uh, Our first work day for the Gambler builds is... Uh, July 1st, so an episode will come out July 2nd, every day after that until we're on The Gambler. Uh, oh, one more thing I did want to ask you guys. So I like to keep episodes specifically like one car if possible. And so what I'm actually thinking about doing, it's kind of crazy, is filming doing two episodes every single day. Because I also am going to be working an insane amount, so it kind of works out, where we do one on the Mercedes, and then we do one on the Corvette. And they'd be a little bit, they might be a little bit shorter, they might not. Um, but let me know what you guys would think about that. It, it would, I, I like it because then somebody can come back and watch from like, you know, say a month later or a year later, they want to just see the Mercedes from start to finish. They could do that. And if they want to just see the Corvette, they could do that as well. Kind of keep them two separate things. Also not going to lie, doing two separate videos every day would really help support the channel. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I, I think I can do it. Um, I think it would be kind of cool. And I'm really interested to see how that works out. I've never seen a channel post for like two weeks, two videos every single day. I think it could be pretty cool. So let me know what you guys think about all that stuff. And I will see you guys July 2nd. Peace.